Hello everyone, my name is Grimith, and I feel like telling a story. This will be my first time using Reign of the Star Kings. The story of mankind's early faltering steps in the space have faded into legend. Humans have now touched every corner of the galaxy. We constructed a network of politics and trade and culture that spanned thousands of light years and trillions of individual lives. Most of the galaxy now falls under the control of one of a handful of competing empires, each with its own laws and traditions. Within each empire, powerful family houses control planets or systems or whole sectors of the galaxy. The leaders of these houses are answerable only to their emperor, who reigns supreme from the safety of the homeworld. Empires ebb and flow. They rise, flourish, do battle, and compete with each other, and finally fall. But always another empire will rise to take their place. This is a solo role-playing game where I will chart the lives of galactic emperors and the history of the worlds they rule. I'll be using two six-sided dice to build the family tree of a fictional royal family. I will be recording the challenges they faced, the decisions they made, and discover how these decisions impacted future generations. You can grab this for $5 on itch.io. I have a page already ready to track. We're bringing back House Ravenor. And our progenitor emperor will be Clovis. Pulling open the actual game rules PDF because we're going to be needing that to actually play the fucking game. The story of mankind's early faltering steps into space have faded into legend. The development of jump drive technology allowed intrepid explorers to journey between star systems in a handful of days. Only a few centuries after first setting foot on their moon, humans had touched almost every star system in the galaxy discovering and colonizing worlds of imaginable variety. The limited opportunities of Earth were forgotten as humans constructed a network of politics and trade and culture, spanning thousands of light years and trillions of individual lives. As their universe changed, outdated politics were abandoned. A handful of competing empires now control most of the galaxy, each with its own laws and traditions. Within each empire, powerful family houses control planets or systems or whole sectors. The leaders of these noble houses are answerable only to their emperor, who reigns supreme from the safety of the home world. Empires ebb and flow. They rise, grow in strength, compete and do battle, and only finally to fall. But always another empire will rise to take their place. I don't know anything. I, it beats me. Other than the name of our emperor. Uh, any details about what I'm doing? In regards to the story I'm I'm going to tell. That's what I'm here to find out, as I chart reigning emperors, spouses, and offspring. I've chosen the name of the emperor. His name is Clovis. We'll be keeping track of a family tree, and I'll be writing an outline of their life story. Uh, with the help of events that I'll be rolling for. I do have scores I am meant to keep track of for dishonorable, unstable, and weak. These will only ever go up through the generations and will eventually bring the fall of the Empire. First thing we need to do is determine our sobriquet. Our, our name, the, the title that the Emperor is best remembered for until the end of time. So, let's discover... What Clovis, when, when people think back, you know, 500 years from now, a thousand years from now, what Clovis, like, what's his title? Is he going to be beloved? Is he going to be a tyrant? Is he going to be a, a reckless? Am I going to have to reach super far and devour my microphone in order for this to be captured on my webcam? This is my first die. This is my second die. So we're looking for a four and a six. The Conqueror! Oh, Clovis the Conqueror. Sounds great. Clovis. Let's pull this up. The Conqueror. Clovis Ravenor. The Conqueror. Maybe Clovis the Conqueror Ravenor? No. Clovis Ravenor, the Conqueror, progenitor of the bloodline. Yes, it makes sense. He carved out, like, control of the initial core of planets, one of which would become his homeworld, uh, to, like, 
to spawn this dynasty. Uh, maybe, like, he was a no one, and he seized control over his own homeworld, and he declared his own new fledgling empire. Uh, maybe he was a political conqueror and not a military conqueror. Maybe. I don't know yet. Let's pull up the game rules again. The Conqueror has no scores tied with it. Let's disappear that momentarily for you all as we go to spouses. Throughout history, tradition has generally demanded that emperors share their lives with a spouse. For each emperor, roll 2d6 to determine who the emperor married and how the emperor's spouse is remembered by their people. Give the emperor's spouse a name, record the spouse in the family tree. It will have an impact on the emperor's character and the character of their offspring. So... Clovis the Conqueror married someone. That's a three and a three. Clovis married an advisor. Okay. Yeah. Let's name her. Pull open our browser here. So Clovis married... We'll call her... Eleanor. Okay. Yeah, Eleanor, the advisor. Uh, we'll say... I meant for this to be like the event category. Um, I could always put in like Eleanor advisor as it's written. No, I don't like that there. Eleanor. I do want to chart that though. So let's... Have this be down here in some, yes, event one, event one, event one, event one. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant to do. Um, change the color here. We'll go with a like a like a green. Yeah, we'll go with like a dark green and uh, wife, Eleanor. Um. The book doesn't state that she's part of, like, a noble house. Or any kind. It doesn't, also doesn't state that she's a commoner. So, Eleanor here, we're going to call her Eleanor of... Not a, uh... Not a major house. Probably not even a minor house. But not a commoner. So, somewhere in, like, a... Like, a respected, like, business-type class... Maybe something of, like, a, a minor house that's that had fallen into, you know, anonymity. Like, she has, like, traces of, like, a bloodline that was once recognized of significance. I tell you what. Okay. So, Clovis is a conqueror, and he conquered the planet that's now known as his homeworld by overthrowing the previous regime, right? And Eleanor there, an advisor, I would rather write it like that, uh, was the uh, advisor of the previous emperor. Uh, yeah, was an advisor of the previous emperor whose family bloodline no longer rules. And when Clovis conquered this planet... Um, he, he brought her to his side and did that through an act of marriage because he recognized the, that her talents were being underutilized by this weak and ineffective, uh, ruler, like barely out of regency, uh, stumbling through the people had lost their faith in the, in like the, the past and, uh, Clovis flipped a fucking galactic table and uh, the people were like won over in the home world and it quickly radiated out across the territories that this, this bloodline held. Uh, and uh, not giving a fuck about any significant titles, uh, marrying for pragmatism and uh, effectiveness, Clovis selected Eleanor to be his wife. Uh, cunning and efficient. Advisor. 
Uh, Seneschal Chamberlain? Spymaster? Ooh. Spymaster to the previous empire. Cunning and efficient. I like that. Yeah, how many how many plots are won when you when you fucking seduce the the spy master? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, good, good, good. Now we have a we have an image here of how Clovis managed to conquer uh, his his predecessor of how he overthrew. All right, all right, cool, 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 cool. Let's flip back to the game rules. We now need to determine heirs. The role of tradition is essential in ensuring the stability of the empire. During the reign of the first emperor, decide the traditional method of succession. The title of emperor can be passed to the eldest offspring, to sons, eldest first, and to daughters, eldest first, to daughters, eldest first, exclusively to sons or daughters, to a favorite child. Any variation thereof. Once a tradition has been decided, it should not be deviated from except in exceptional circumstances. Moving away from tradition may cause great upset and political division across the empire. So, Clovis isn't here about ageism. Clovis is here about efficiency, effectiveness. Clovis and Eleanor talk about who has the right to rule, and it, it's they're going to be their favorite child to, to a meritocracy, to the one they think is the best. Now, having seen the decay of the previous empire, which caused Clovis's like rise to greatness. He wants to ensure that the Ravenor line remains strong for centuries, if not millennia. Okay. We've crowned Clovis. Woo! We need to roll 2d6 and take a note of the total. Roll 1d6 and subtract this number from the first total to determine how many children Clovis and Eleanor had, and if if we end up having the number of zero, then I guess uh, Clovis's brother is. <laughs> this will be a really fucking small empire. How about we say it's a a number greater than zero? I've already spent my creativity on this first section. God forbid I have to just chuck this character sheet. It's like it'd be like creating a, a character in the Traveler RPG character creation system where your character dies in character creation. It's like, oh, ah. Uh. Okay. So first, let's decide 2d6. That's nine. Now we're going to roll 1d6. How many kids did Clovis and Eleanor have? Five. Five children. And, uh, I don't think I care, uh, what their genders are at the moment uh, for the determination system that is used here at the bottom of the page. But I do have to name these fucking kids. Okay. Uh, also, uh, was not prepared for five kids. And you know, if I end up having miscounted uh, nine minus four, Grimmuff, no, you rolled the wrong number. It's fine. Sometimes uh, history doesn't remember correctly, you know? <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes details get lost. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, I totally had five kids. Yeah, yeah. Totally had four kids. Totally had 19 kids. You know. Lot kids. Lot kids. We'll put it like that. Uh, let's see here. We'll name this first one. We'll go with a name I like. Alira. And the second kid, we'll call her... Okay. Hmm, Gabrielle. And the third one we'll call... Rand. And the fourth one we'll call... Morgan. And the fifth one we'll name... I have like a, a bizarre, like exotic name in my head. Absolutely fucking not. Those, those have no business being in my head. 
call him uh, Ted, the Duke of Ted. Yes, <laughs> good work, Ted. You're doing you're doing great. Those are those are the names of the five children. Uh, the favorite is at the top. Alira is the bestest. Uh, we'll see if she makes it. I guess. Our five children. All right. Back to the rules. Whoop. And if you know. I get any of the rules wrong on their page. It's okay, it's a solo story I'm telling. All right, we have events to decide. The Emperor directs the lives of trillions, but even they are compelled by random events. For each Emperor, roll 1d6 to determine how many major events occurred during their reign. Okay. And our Empire starts on the rise. So, how many major events we got? Three. Three major events. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Three. Cool. Let's mark that down. Yeah, we'll say event one of three, just so I don't forget the total. Cool. Back to the game rules. Rise. Yep, we're starting in a rise. The rise of House Ravenor. By the way, I like the the 1920s Art Deco like style of the the book layout. The Great Gatsby. Yeah, because that's the only thing you can possibly think of when you think of the 1920s. It couldn't possibly be anything else. No. All right. We have three major events to roll for. Let's get the first out of the way. Remember, our blue die is the first die. Our extra life die received over a decade ago. It's a six and a three. What do we have on the board? Let's remove the camera view. A source of ancient wisdom is discovered on a distant planet. Its secrets have lain undiscovered for millennia. What must be done to ensure its safety? The Empire enters a golden age. I also should have used a different... Yeah, I should have used my other PDF reader to copy and paste this text easily. One moment. All right, the hell with it. My other PDF reader, fussy about trying to capture the text, too. I don't feel like pasting just area selection images into my official historian records. So... A source of ancient wisdom is discovered on a planet. Secrets have lain undiscovered for millennia. Must be must be done to ensure its safety. The Empire enters a golden age. Awesome. I've also uh, decided that uh, Clovis, the Emperor of Cybrixia, the Cybrixian Empire, that nomenclature is something I've used before in my roleplay over the various years. Something I cobbled together myself. And the destroyer of the weak and ineffectual Lundgren bloodline. Left Eleanor the same. So what is the source of ancient wisdom discovered on a distant planet uh, whose secrets have lain undiscovered for millennia? Um, why don't we, in the interest of the, the, th the theme that, uh, that the, the book is using, particularly with uh, some of its naming and design, uh, go with... An ancient wisdom of life longevity, um, where you can revitalize and de-age your cellular structure. It doesn't change the, the felt age, but there is a rejuvenative uh, quality to it, uh, fueled by a uh a spice <laughs> i wanted to i wanted to use like a, a geriatric drug uh a, a chemical a uh yeah like a catalyst whose ingredients uh may only be obtained on this planet yeah 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 that sounds great okay uh, so we'll say the source of uh, 
Clovis unravels, uncovers, discovers um, the secrets of rejuvenation uh, by which humans uh, may may regress their age, regress their physical age, uh, no, return their physical age to life's prime. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, the, the process occurs within specially crafted chambers, you know, rejuvenation chambers, uh, fueled by a particular catalyst only available on uh, this distant planet. On the planet of Erebus. The, see here, the Emperor's, the Emperor's Explorer. Let's put him, why don't I get like an Explorer name here? Why don't we get a, uh, Rogue Trader. <laughs> a stellar, the Emperor's Stellar. The Emperor's heir, Alira Reaper. No, no, Reaper? No, Ravenor. Damn it. <laughs> Alira Ravenor. Eager to prove her worth to her parents, sets out on on a directive to explore uncharted stars you know and uh turns out that this planet had just fallen off of charts upon the distant planet of erebus she discovers the lost secrets of rejuvenation by which humans may return their physical age to life's prime. Right. Only available upon the planet. I feel like uh, fueled by a near unique catalyst which only grows upon Erebus. In response, Clovis, uh, the Emperor, immediately makes her, makes her director of the planet and and ships numerous prefab like shipyards, star bases and directs most of the homeworld's half of the homeworld's resources to the um, development and security and profligation of this ancient wisdom. Okay. To the profil, we'll just say profilgation of this ancient wisdom. You know, it's, uh, it's not like, it's not hoarded, but, uh, it's, uh, leveraged. 
Yeah. And people are like, wow, my body can be rejuvenated and restored. Okay. Okay. All right. That's that event. Cool. Great. Good work, Alira. That's why you're the favorite child. Yes. That's why you're gonna you're gonna be the next emperor. You could say emperor. Emperor, emperor. The executrix. Ooh. Yes. She has made executrix. Yes. I do like that title. Executrix. Executrix of Erebus. Executrix of Erebus. Erebus? No, Erebus. Good. Great. Awesome. Good work. Event two of three. And we are now in a golden age as a result of that. So why don't we change the color here to feel like a dark yellow? Yeah, golden age. Cool. Pull back up the game rules. And flip to the golden age section. Okay. I, uh, I have not read these, but my eyes just quickly glossed over, uh, <laughs> the snake eye section. <laughs> Deeply upsetting. <laughs> Double sixes? All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> People of the homeworld have grown bored. The rage of outlandish Atlant cultures still found beyond the Empire draw their attention as they look for new moral choices and new leadership. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hmm. What if you could live forever? <laughs> okay, that was a very brief golden age. <laughs> oh. One moment. <laughs> All right. So, our new entry is now in the log. Official historian is just full of fucking shrugs. So, how the hell did this happen? We're gonna say that, uh... Oh. The... Okay, so... We found this ancient wisdom. And the... The citizens of, like, this home, the home world are still recovering from, like, the, what the Lundgren bloodline did. And Clovis came and conquered, and then Clovis directed half of the home world's resources to profligating this ancient wisdom. Like, so many structures have been, like, created and then shipped over to Erebus. There's an executrix there. Rejuvenation chambers are spreading across far and wide. And the homeworld, the people there are like, What else could be there? What, uh, what else? The... Cybrixia's citizens become enamored by the by the ancient wisdom found on Erebus. What other secrets may we find? Could we discover? by the ancient wisdom of found on Erebus and the home world's resources are further depleted as citizens as in a mass exodus across the stars in search of greater wisdom, in search of signs to discover signs of the civilization which created, which first created 
of the Empire of the Empire, which first created, first invented, created, created these first dis yeah, these rejuvenation chambers. The Emperor immediately regrets. Uh, the Emperor comes to regret how many resources he shifted into spreading the once forgotten lore and struggles to hold on and struggles to maintain, struggles to cling on to, struggles to... Punch to... Control. Struggles to... Struggles to find the proper phrase to plug into this fucking sentence. Um... By the way, this historian might be an unreliable narrator. Oomst the monsters can say. And struggles to... Hold, retain power in his nascent rulership, empire, and struggles to retain power. The end. Okay. Tybrixia's citizens become enamored by the ancient wisdom found on Erebus. The homeworld's resources are further depleted in a mass exodus across the stars to discover signs of the empire of the We'll use civilization, which first created discovered the rejuvenation reju the rejuvenative of secrets. Hmm. The secrets themselves aren't rejuvenative. Like, you know, like there could be like some philosophy there, lifestyles, you know, ways to think to direct your thoughts. Uh, which are alien in concept to the folks of Cybrixia. And there's just like a, now there's like a talent drain that's happening on the homeworld. And uh, Clovis, way overcommitted in the pursuit of the, the Golden Age, uh, might have been some arguments with his wife about uh, how much he was sending out. And yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Pull back up the game rules, and uh, we'll go to the fall section now. Because we, we rose, we, we gelded, we, no, we gilded ourselves. Not gelded, that's a different thing. And now we are fallen. Woo, this will be our third event. This is going to be the last event of, uh, of Clovis's uh, reign before he dies. I suppose the regenerative secrets, I mean, and I, like, maybe they restore, like, outward physical attributes, but, ah, well, let's not think about it anymore. We have jump drive technology, who gives a fuck? Let's also pull up the, the camera so that the result can be seen. We have a two and a four. Two, four. A technology which the Empire has long since relied upon is beginning to fail for unknown reasons. How do things change? What can be done? One moment. And here we are. A technology which the Empire has long since relied upon is beginning to fail for unknown reasons. How do things change? What can be done. Well, we're going to continue along with the, the theming here of, uh, of the first event and leading into the second event. It's not that jump drive technology itself is failing. It's the, the computational machines, the, the navigation the advanced navigation systems, the mathematical comp compilers, 
which uh, allow the... which ensure that when the jump drives are activated, the ships don't end up colliding with any celestial bodies during jump drive. Uh, that technology is beginning to fail, which is a real problem uh, given the exodus that is happening uh, from Cybrixia and the, the incredible distance between Erebus and Cybrixia. This uh, greatly strains uh, trade across the Empire itself and uh, the like intra trade and inter trade, and also uh, severely hampers exploration. It it uh it makes it much more perilous. Uh, to that end, I might start typing here once I finish like crafting this in my in my meat brain, my brain meats. Uh, rejuvenation chambers are. I'm basically creating, like, steersmen here. Like, navigation killed steersmen. <laughs> yeah? Ah, fuck it. Let's not spend too long on it. This empire, you know, may may fall with Alira. So, um, the, I don't even know what the fuck kind of bullshit made up, like, technical jargon I want to use here. The, Mathematical... Mathy... Advanced... Navigation systems... Used to... How does the opening of the book put this? Development of jump drive technology... Allows intrepid explorers to journey between star systems in a handful of days... Yeah, okay. The navigation systems, the technology uh, which uh, navigates, which directs, which directs Cybrixia's starships in jump drive as it's not that Cybrixia is like like it's not that the jumps are becoming unarrival it's that the destinations themselves are becoming unarrival the the navigational computers the navigation computers the navigation computers uh, which calculate which calculate starship jump trajectories are becoming increasingly unreliable. Trade is strained, strained across the empire. And, and communication from Cybrixia to Erebus becomes a cooperation between Cybrixia, between, from the home world, from the home world to Erebus becomes complicated. Explorers... Considerable funding from houses major and minor reveals a risky way by which humans themselves 
may replace the navigation computers by transmogrifying themselves within rejuvenation within modified rejuvenation chambers. But what consequences will arise from this new cast, these steersmen? Why don't we just call them navigators with their three eyes? Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, what a swing here from the Conqueror. Go back to the book. We ha don't have any collapse. We haven't gotten any dishonorable, unstable, or weak points. Death. The death of an emperor is a time of great upheaval. Now we need to see how the fuck Clovis died. Ah! Okay, one and five. Parasitic infection. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's... Well, I mean... I, I mean, it's not like... I'm now, like, looking over these Dance of the Death page, and it's not like, yay! Parasitic infection. Where do, exactly do I want to chart this? Died of parasitic infection? Why don't we make a separate... Died of parasitic infection. We could say it's like an unknown parasite. Uh, a consequence of... All the explorers, like the, the mass exodus, uh, maybe it's something that was brought back from Erebus. Uh, yeah. A, um, a parasite a previously unheard of uh, that has some sort of ecological symbiosis uh, with, the, uh, with the catalyst. Maybe the catalyst itself is a parasite. Okay. And so Clovis uh, went into rejuvenation chamber and something went wrong and he died. All right. Uh, I don't know what it would call this, like an annual like checkup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like you, you every every year, you know, you you, you know, if you're you're wealthy enough, you you go spend time in the rejuvenation chamber. Uh, a mishap occurred during the emperor's annual uh rejuvenation, like. We'll just call it annual rejuvenation. Maybe we'll make it a proper noun. And the catalyst... escaped the chamber. The catalyst escaped the chamber. The chamber and infected his bloodstream. And entered his bloodstream? And entered his bloodstream. He died shortly thereafter. <laughs> Scientists, the homeworld's doctors, the homeworld's remaining medical experts could not save him. All right. Well, 
We have we ha we have some ideas of mine here. Clovis Ravenor, the Conqueror, Emperor Cybrexia. Uh, there was a decaying bloodline, a rulership there. He overthrew them, and his 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 radical ideas, his new energy, this fresh blood, you know, wildfire, and Cybrixia is rallied. Yes, long live the emperor. He married Eleanor, cunning, efficient, her wisdom and intelligence you know, helped to guide the emperor across the years and the stars. There. Their issue, Alira, eager to prove her worth, found, discovered the lost secrets of rejuvenation by which humans may return their physical age to life's, may reset their physical age to life's prime. What does life's prime mean? And now we know that the catalyst is, is a, uh, it's, uh, if not, like, filtered through the chamber itself, is a fucking parasite. <laughs> Good. Good. Great. Which only grows upon Erebus. Uh, she's now executrix of Erebus. Uh, perhaps she will be ruling from there? Uh, anyway, this discovery sparked a golden age. Uh, but that golden age promptly collapsed as people of the home world like, they were still, like, recovering from the, the gaucheries of the previous empire. And they're like, what other secrets are out there? Let's find them. Like, so many of the homeworld's resources had already been depleted to prop up Erebus and ensure that the entire empire knew of these rejuvenation chambers. And uh, people just fucking left. Ghost, like, oh shit! <laughs> no, no, I'm overcommitted! Fuck! Ah! And, uh, then, compounding the matter, navigation computers, uh, which calculating starship jump trajectories, started to become unreliable. No one knows why. And, uh, that really strained the, the heavy distances, like explorers heading out there were having problems. Like, returning, investments were being lost, uh, the executrix and the emperor having difficulties communicating and coordinating, and, uh, you know, backers, funders, patrons working mightily to fuel scientists going to risky research paths, leading to the culmination of a, the creation of a new caste, navigators, uh, people who are, like, enter a special process with, like, a, a modified rejuvenation chamber and, uh, basically are required to steer our starships. Now, I mean, you could not have them, but you, your jump drive may end up putting you in a planet. That seems bad. As bad as Clovis himself dying. Oops. Well, Shit happens. <laughs> Succession. Tradition by which the Emperor's heir is chosen should be adhered to. Uh, and that will most certainly be to Alira. And you can see an example here, which is uh, a reference to Dune. It's, it's not quite the tree. <laughs> but it's a pretty strong reason. And we don't need to determine this uh, succession thing because we're not determining the, the new Emperor in a... Uh, an unsanctioned way. We're going to continue writing the family tree and recording the lives of the emperors until the family is no more. And I'm pretty interested to see how the uh, how the next how the next emperor's rule turns out. I'm I'm intrigued by this. Didn't know how this story was going to go. Uh, it's like how interested I would be in continuing to tell it. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not we're not going to tell the story. Like, in this video, I'll save it for next time. But I do want a sobriquet to work with here. I need just something that I can have percolating in my brain. My, my brain juices. How will Alira be known to people centuries from now?
That's a four and a five. Alira will be known as the cruel. <laughs> We're taking, we're taking her parents, like, parents, like, personalities and philosophies, and we're going darker. I'll see you then.